We are going to turn our attention to a big story that's coming out of China up first. Narendra Modi, the Indian Prime Minister, has made some significant inroads into the cause of reform. Major progress in industrialization and digitization has been made through various initiatives like Make in India and Digital India. What Mr. Modi's reforms actually challenge is vested interests shielded by established values and norms. With tax reform and demonetization implemented more than a year ago, some benefits are coming to light. Thanks to these reforms, according to a recent IMF report, the Indian economy is expected to pick up at a rosy rate of 7.4% in 2018 and 7.8% in 2019. Now, all this and more is part of an opinion piece published in, get this, China's Global Times. The opinion piece is written by Mao Keiji, who is an associate researcher at the International Cooperation Center and the National Development and Reform Commission. It's a Chinese government institution. Remember, the Global Times is the same newspaper that uh, went a little overboard, if we will, during the Indochina standoff in Doklam. So why is China, through Global Times, helping or rather heaping praise on the Indian Prime Minister now? This is less than a year before elections take place in India. So that's the big question. Right, let's go across to Aina Tangen. He's an economic commentator joining us live from Beijing. Uh, Aina, you uh, wouldn't be surprised. First of all, thanks for joining us on the broadcast. Um, you know, Global Times isn't exactly known for drawing a very rosy picture when it comes to reforms or other stories in India. What do you uh, put this particular uh, opinion piece down to, which actually celebrates some of the economic reforms that India is undertaking? I think there's been a massive sea change in how uh, India and China react. Uh, we are now long past uh, Doklam, although it's in the, uh, it's still remembered. The the issue is that uh, China and India realize there's a great opportunity going forward. You have two of the world's largest markets, and these markets can rewrite the rules instead of being dictated to. They can uh, create terms of their own when they're dealing with the countries that have the most amount of money. And this is Europe and the United States, who actually control 60% of the world's worth, world's wealth. But in order to maintain that wealth, they need access to uh, growing markets. And China and India is, are what is growing. Okay. Um, do you see a direct link here also with the fact that uh, the two heads of state, the Indian Prime Minister and the Chinese President, did engage in a one-on-one -on -one informal summit in Wuhan? Can we trace uh, you know, these changes, the sea changes, you call it, uh, back to the informal discussions that have taken place individually between these two men? Yes, I think, I think uh, even before that, when... Uh, uh, Modi uh, visited uh, China. There were uh, good personal feelings. But I think in the case of this most recent uh, tete a tete in Wuhan, I think they realized that a way of working together, and I think it's very pragmatic. I think both sides are saying, look, I, I want to do this, and they're being welcomed. I mean, you, you look at the uh, drugs um, that are produced in India for cancer patients are now being the... the uh, Tariffs are being erased, as are you know hundreds of other categories, and India is doing the same. I think both realize that their future on trade is in the same track, and that together they can be much stronger than they can by being divided by other uh, countries and interests. That's interesting. Uh, you brought up tariffs, so I'm going to ask you about uh, the trade war uh, that's going on between the United States and China. Uh, is China also keeping its options open when it comes to um, countries like India, countries that it hasn't had the best of ties with off late, uh, geopolitically speaking, but economically, I suppose, this would be the best time to keep avenues open? Well, yeah, absolutely. And I, you know, I think realistically you have to say that the, the, uh, the higher tensions with the U.S. are causing China to speed up. It's, um, as you said, it's other uh, alternatives and avenues. But, you know, remember, uh, in 2013, uh, five years ago, she was the first one to say, look, you know, the, this next century will be defined by the relationship between India and China. This is not something that's just changed in the last year or two months or two days. This is really something that has been coming for a long time, this realization that emerging and developing countries have more in common today and more need for a global a trade system than they have in the, in the past. So from that perspective, it, it's, it's something that they will be going forward with.
All right, uh, Aina Tanga, and we leave it at that. Thanks very much uh, for joining us with uh, your perspective on that story. Uh, one, of course, that has raised quite a few eyebrows considering uh, the source. It is the Global Times, uh, the Chinese uh, spokes uh, or rather mouthpiece that has come out uh, singing praises of the Indian Prime Minister and, its e and his economic reforms.